Greetings friends, I hope this video finds you healthy and in good fortunes. So I did want to share a little tidbit with you guys. I was playing Illusion of Gaia with my two-year-old daughter the other day, and she did not like Gaia there one bit. In fact, her very words were, don't like it. <laughs> so, um, I guess I'm not alone in finding her a little bit unsettling. Maybe if she had open eyes, or eyes at all, I <laughs> maybe that would help. Also, all the horns going out of her head. So let's move on. Now, they did say clockwise, so this is not how the clock goes. In fact, I think... Yes, this is clockwise. Very well. This is interesting because we're in Nazca and these statues are vaguely, I guess, um, Sumerian or something you'd expect from, uh, you know, the ancient Middle East in general. We'll just say that. I forget what they're called. And it was something I noticed earlier. It makes sense because it seems that there's some connection between the Sky Garden and Babel and possibly even the Moon Tribe. This is mostly just conjecture on my part. I don't know for a fact. It's something I'm going to look into. See if we can come to any conclusions. And I really should block those uh, fist cannons. They hurt. Some things you can block with the flute, others you can. Lasers generally pass through you, or through your defenses. Do these hurt you? Okay. Well, on the flip side, these uh, ball things, they actually kind of rain down and damage you, so... We haven't seen that yet, but we will. What have we here? A red jewel. I'll take it. I do like this area. That was a close call. It's um... One of my favorites, I think I've mentioned that before. Let me just check back here. I remember there's a few things kind of hidden around here. But yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite places in the game. And has some of the most interesting foes. And, you know, I wonder if, it's, if this is supposed to be, um based off of something. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I have to look into it. I've always thought it was just kind of purely um, fantasy that they came up with, and here we are on the flip side. Close calls with these lasers. You can see these enemies are far more sturdy, far faster, and they will rain hell down on you. So you really just have to try to run away and do your best. Not to get your shit wrecked. No, no. Although those rocket punches actually seem weaker coming from those guys. I don't know, maybe they are more dangerous because they do come back, I guess. 
the uncautious might get hit by that. And here we go. These things annoy me. You can't kill them. You really just have to do your best to run past them. And of course you get situations like this, where you have one of these with one of those. Oh, give me life! How kind. I'm always happy to see them. It makes me wonder, I don't know what the max lives you can get in this game are. We're already up to three. Going on four. I think it doesn't really matter though, because you... I vaguely remember revisiting areas in my youth. And, uh... Finding that the enemies had respawned. So... You probably can just have nine. Here we got an herb. That's good because we need it. We are fighting the bosses with will only. And that means we are going to need a lot of herbs. Uh, the boss here shouldn't give me too much trouble. I've actually beaten him with will before, if I recall correctly. It's not a major thing. You have to be a little bit more careful with Will than Frieden, but you can see there's a horrible screaming face in that explosion. And I have to say, the explosions in this game actually look better than those in Mighty Number no. 9. <laughs> I finally saw the, uh, the infamous Robot Master or Masterclass trailer, and, uh, man. It was incredibly crass. <laughs> I generally don't watch trailers, but um, Rontro mentioned it. So I decided, well, I should watch it and see what the hubbub's about. If you haven't seen it, or know what Mighty Number no. 9 is, it's, uh... Okay, you got the crystal ball. Mighty Number no. 9 is... In Afune's project, he's the guy who is generally credited with making the classic Mega Man series. It's his project. He left Capcom and decided, hey, why not fund a Kickstarter campaign and make my own game? It's, uh... <laughs> it's not looking all that great. I don't know what's going on. But... It's, uh, it's not, it doesn't look too promising as games go. I might buy it and try it, though. Well, I don't try games if I buy them. I play it through, suffer through it, do it for you guys. Um, yeah, I might buy it, see what it is, uh, what the, all the hubbub's about. It does look like it has issues might not be completely terrible. Um, that's why I don't watch trailers, because very often they're misleading and they're done by, you know, marketing people who and haven't necessarily played the game. <laughs> you know, so really there's not, not a whole lot of point to it. I remember the Final Fantasy VII trailer you know, as stoked as I was about it, it looked nothing like actual Final Fantasy VII. You know, they did all the, uh, the video rendering and all that, the CG and all that, you know, on what was like a super top-notch computer at the time. You know, something that was way more powerful than the PS1. So, you know, it wasn't at all representative of what Final Fantasy VII looked like. Not to say that Final Fantasy VII wasn't good, which is one of my favorites, and it was a good trailer, but, you know, they don't usually tell you very much that you need to know. I guess that's my point. 
But yeah, it's, <laughs> check it out. It's uh, I've I've never seen a trailer where they use the word friggin'. Um, and it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're just kind of like hanging out with your friends or just doing like something like I'm doing, and you say friggin'. Uh, okay, but like, yeah, you know, this is a trailer where you're promoting your game. And you say friggin', like, I don't, I don't know, there's just, there's just something about it. And he said it, like, multiple times, like, by that point you might as well just say fucking, like, <laughs> well, anyway, I'm gonna let that go. Because we're talking about Illusion of Gaia, this is a, this is a statue, I guess I have to move him, or her, or it. Very un-Babylonian, this thing, right? Looks like it should have been somewhere else. And maybe it was uh, originally intended to be in a different place in the game. Who knows? That does sometimes happen. Friggin' Illusion of Gaia. What a friggin' great game. Buy it now! That's what the, uh... IOG trailer was like. In fact, this game had really excellent marketing. The American version, at least. I don't know what Europe and Australia got, or Japan. But here in the States, we got, if you bought it early on, you got a shirt, a t-shirt packed in, the map. I, have, I still have the map. Unfortunately, I wore the shirt like a tool and destroyed it over the years and you had a bonus guide in the back of the instruction manual that I mentioned before so it was um, really an excellent marketing campaign there was even you know there were plenty of ads and stuff too I remember I think they appeared in stuff like EGM back before it was a rag and uh, a few others not that EGM was always super good, but there was once a time where it was a really excellent magazine and declined, but that's another story on its own. But yes, it, this game really had good marketing. I remember uh, one of the ads had Frieden Sword, and it had like a description of where it got all its nicks and dents and stuff. It was really kind of a cool idea. I don't know how well this game did in terms of sales, it's something I'd have to look up. I know it's really kind of fondly remembered, and certainly has a following. Not a huge one, but a reasonable one. And we are going to dark fire that friggin' robot thing. Yes, yeah, my word of the day is friggin'. It was suggested to me by Google. Google's always helpful. Always teaching you new words. And pushing their political agendas. But that's, that's a whole other thing. Or maybe not. I don't know. This thing's gonna shoot lasers at me. Loves doing that. Now, when I say what I said about Google, I have to be clear. I just feel that a company like that should be very neutral and uh, you know, just kind of stay away from some of that stuff, especially nowadays. Is kind of like a funny time we live in. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm not using Dark Fryer more. Because I love it. And uh, we will actually get an upgrade for it. 
which will be good fun if I can't if I can avoid walking into that stuff <clears throat> I wonder what's in here hmm oh ouch ouch see this is why I don't like those things you found the crystal ball oh <laughs> I was hoping for some herb. Sweet, sweet herb for young Will. He's too young to be doing that. Kind of disappointed in him. Actually, I don't really give a shit, but... Let's, uh... Go back on the flip side. This is one of the reasons why I really love this area. And also, I didn't mention this, oops, I'm going the wrong way, I didn't mention this, but I never really kind of made this uh, connection, but this enemy radar, I'm beginning to think that is somehow connected with, uh, somehow connected with Will and, I guess, Raiden's dark power. Um, you know, usually normal people can't sense monsters around them, at least as far as I know. Uh, but you know, it, it does seem to kind of tie in with that sixth sense, the sixth sense that they were talking about. I see dead people. I see monsters. <laughs> you know, so maybe maybe there's a thing with that. And I like this because this is not very often use this animation. As you can see, both Breeden and Will have it. Very cool stuff. It's just uh, another nice thing, another nice way that you can see that they really tried to make a quality game with Illusion of Gaia. I thought I had more, um... Hmm. I thought I had more red jewels. Oh well. Probably did. Maybe not. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky. Because we will have to manipulate some switches. I don't think it's anything too dire. But it has been a while. Hit some friggin' switches today. Versus those things, and I think we will need Young Will. We will need to return to Young Will. Um, how are we gonna do that? Uh, well, we'll jump over the thingy first. That's how we're going to return to Young Will. Back of garden. So it's kind of interesting to think they're um, essentially hanging upside down like bats. <laughs> you found a red jewel. Nice. Uh, like I said, I'm not really too concerned about these things because I do have a save with many red jewels on it. In fact, all of them. And what's... What's going on here? Hmm. I guess I have to, like, dark fire this. None of this seems to do anything. But yes, once it's time to do things and stuff with things, ouch, ouch, you're gonna screw me up there. Once it's time, we will load that save up and uh, I forget what to do here. <laughs> it has been a while. Um, 
I'm guessing probably nothing. But yeah, we'll load that save. Um, let me finish this thought here. We'll load that save. And we will see the surprise you get when you get all the red jewels. It's nothing super spectacular. But it is a nice addition they threw into the game. Let me visit Gaia. The lovely Earth spirit that frightens two-year-olds. And grown men. Can I return to you? No. Hmm. I really wish I had my Illusion of Gaia guidebook handy right now. I just played through this area a year ago. I should know better. Let me make sure I'm not missing something super simple. I'm pretty sure like there's like a thing like, where you have to run up here. Maybe... Oh, that's clumsy. I can't seem to scale that. Maybe he can destroy those, I don't know. I'm obviously missing something very simple. And it's, you know, it's funny, that happens sometimes when you're so familiar with the game. You know, your memory sometimes just kind of, uh, fails you. Especially since I don't play it super regularly, it's usually every few years or so. So it's like I have an idea of what I should be doing. There we go. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And I didn't want to do that. Good times. Alright. So, that didn't seem to help us much at all. Awesome. Does this go down ever? Is there a way to make it go down, please? Well, if I hit it now, now they both go down. Well, we will, um... Hmm. <laughs> I would say we'll come back to this area, maybe. Maybe that's the key to success here. Because I am completely befuddled. I don't know what I need to do here. Let's make sure I didn't miss something very simple that I should have noticed before. Like something over here. That's probably. Oh, yeah. Of course! Of course I missed that. Wow. Good work. That was, uh, that was pretty sad. I apologize for that. I should know better. And did I, I'm gonna make sure, okay, so there's pillars there, pillars here, pillars everywhere. And then we kill this side. And we get defense. Like, out of all the stats, like, I almost feel like defense doesn't do anything. Obviously it does. I'm sure if I didn't get those defense bonuses, I'd be taking hideous amounts of damage, but, you know, it just acts so subtly you don't really notice it. So I guess I get Will, run down there, make sure all these block pillar things are dropped, and then get this thing. That's, I guess, what you do. We'll find out. Now I missed what I was trying to do. 
Surprise, surprise. There we go, this is what we want. And there's that area we couldn't get to. First we need the dark fire to open this up. If we can hit it. Hitting things always works. Everyone. Usually. Now we can return to Young Will. Right? Am I right? I'm right. Will's pose is kind of like uh, a little on the lame side. I don't know what he's doing exactly. Is he running? Is he punching Kara? <laughs> or perhaps, um, what's that kid's name? Eric? We don't know. And I keep saying Kara becomes a better character. I hope I'm right. I'm beginning to doubt my memory. Well, how does this work? I'm pretty sure those pillars are... yeah. Those pillars are going to mess us up. I guess we flip over and do some more switch stuff. With switches. Another blocked off area there. Ouch. Run. No shame in running well. These are not my favorite enemies in this game. They're kind of, like, lazy. They actually remind me of things in Light Crusader. I think there was a boss, <laughs> maybe even several bosses in that game, that were composed of spheres. Very lazy stuff. When you step on this, it makes a sound. So I guess I fight this thing. And we get to put it on the platform. I will give IOG a pass on... Oh great, got a sword. Or got a strength. Oh, the rocket fists just fly away. I'm free! Yeah, I will give IOG a pass in this um, case with these enemies because it has a pretty damn diverse bestiary as a game, well, as a lot of games go, really. Even, even modern games, you know, you don't usually have so many enemies, although it probably costs many thousands of dollars to design a single enemy these days, so there's that. But yeah, this game has a good BC area, so I can't rag on it too much for those crappy enemies. There's a few of them in the game, but a lot of them are pretty cool, like the uh, fisting robots and, the, you know, spear guys and all that happy crap. And I screwed that up. And I screwed it up again. Well, I'm going to have to do this. I'm, like, I'm going to have to go around because I messed up. Yep. Yeah. Don't be like me. Don't mess up. Well, I think... That thing is so slow, it's actually more dangerous. Or just more irritating. Take your pick. Okay, maybe I can get this right this time. I think I was just running at the wrong point. 
Ah, uh, yeah, I know where I have to go now. Okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> they don't make this easy. I don't ever remember having an issue with that. Maybe I always have an issue, and it's so traumatic I just repress the memory. Ah, uh, yes. It's, that's kind of like driving behind public transportation. Or riding it. <laughs> Either way, I guess it's a similar experience. Alright, so we have the next to last crystal ball. Yes, put the ball in the hole. It puts lotion on its skin. Yes, we will record. Yes, we will continue. We will clear out this last area. And I actually kind of, I don't know why I did this, but um, on the video that I wrecked by not doing an audio video check, like I always do, I actually start doing these in the reverse order. Um, it's probably a good idea to do them in the proper prescribed method, and I didn't want to jump over that. Because uh, anyway, you want to follow the instructions because you know there's hit points and life power ups do accumulate and do help you survive. So unless you want to do the sky garden the hard way. Sure you go clockwise. And that might actually be either very accidental. It might actually be another reference reference to uh and I did that shit again. <laughs> it might be another reference to Babylon. So I was so busy thinking about that. I wasn't paying attention. Because I do I think, if I remember correctly, at least in, you know, the, what we call the old world, maybe in the new world it was invented sooner, but as far as I know, they were probably one of the first cultures to really kind of keep time. Of course, not in any, you know, way that we do it today. But I think they might have used sundials and things like that. I could be wrong. But I do kind of remember reading something about that. Of course, when I say Babylon, I do refer to that area in general. Because Babylon was actually rather late incarnation of that, uh, that tradition in the Levant. I guess it was, uh, Sumerians or Mesopotamian. Feel free to correct me. In this game it doesn't really matter because it's all kind of crazy and mishmashed together. Probably shouldn't have pissed that thing off. So it took me here, and this place does nothing. Or does it? Does it do things? I don't know. If I move that statue, will things happen? I remember this is the absolute worst part of this area.
And these things, I don't know what these are supposed to be. Are they like griffins or something? I don't know. Who knows? Of course, the concept of duality comes back to uh, confront us again in this one. We have that with Frisia. Now we have it again with the Sky Garden. And, um. Hmm. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So we did that. Went down here. There's nothing down here except disappointment and time wasting. And then we go up here and waste more time and get disappointed. Because this is probably where we came from. Yes, this is where we came from. We're running. Ouch. We're getting hurt. And that goes down there. We don't want to go there. Because we went there and there was no point in it. The only reason why we'd want to do that now is to escape this lovely place. Another life would be nice. A little life refill. Well, whoever designed this thing really had some major balls. Or didn't, and we're trying to overcompensate. Or compensate, I don't know. And I think we will get Frieden. Or Free Dan. He's Dan. You get him for free. He's a free prostitute. Which just makes him a man slut. I guess that's sword and armor. We haven't looked at his stats that they're like worth- oh, I was hoping I could kind of like squeak past that. I guess they're worth like one defense each. Cause he does like one more damage than Will, if I remember correctly. Of course he attacks pretty rapidly. Has way more reach. One damage is actually pretty substantial in this game, so... Especially when fighting bosses. Now we will pull this thing. Or not. Oh, I think I have to nudge it up. Did I ruin that? I think I ruined it. I ruined it! Great! Alright, well, we'll try that again. Come on, Free Dan. Or is it like Freden? It has to be Freden. Has to be. So I don't see. F yeah, with the double E, it can't be f like Freden. Or maybe. Maybe Freedan. I don't know. Well, what a lovely graphic that they used to make that statue disappear. I mean, this game's pretty good about that stuff, but that was kinda... kinda meh. Like, they could've at least, like, made it blow up with, like, the, the white smoke or something, or... I don't know, or flicker. Like, that works. Okay. So we will be careful to... get all the goodies here. Ouch. I don't, I don't appreciate that. That wasn't nice of you. Talk about cyberbullying. This is the original cyberbullying right here. <clears throat> like, people don't know. Oh, you know what? He does seem to do substantially more damage. He might do, like, two more. 
I don't know. Maybe I'll just check his stats, that might help. Yeah, Strength 10, Defense 11. So, maybe I'll remember to look at Will. And, is there a trick here? Yeah, this whole place, I hate to say it, but it's kind of fiddly. Like, I do like it, I enjoy it. But it's a little... A little fiddly. And, we are going to get the other chest there. And of course, we have yet not yet seen fiddly. Because we have not done... The next, uh, the upcoming area. And another area in the game. We get a lot more... A lot more backtracking, complexity, and all that fun stuff. There's one area I absolutely abhor, and it's not what people might think. Usually people really hate the next area. I don't think it's all that bad. There is a, a noticeable difficulty spike. But it's actually a different area that's very irritating maze. That's mm, kind of close to the end of the game. Okay, I went the wrong way. So we do need to jump down from that to escape this area. We have to go north. We got the power. We want to try to get all the uh, the power ups because if we don't, we'll be weak. No one wants weakness. And to be strong. Alright, so I am Frieden by default, and I want to be Will. Hmm, so we'll have to change this. We will have to change it. Do, I think there is a transformation space, a <laughs> dark space of a transformer or whatever the hell you want to call it in this area. I think, I hope, and you guys get to watch me backtrack through here. I should have saved my jabbering about Mighty Number no. 9 and Google for this whole thing, right? And I can make an ass of myself. And that's always much more entertaining than watching someone backtrack. And usually they show you where the dark space is. Get a near one. Of course, you don't like show you, show you. You have to get close to it. You know, that's kind of odd that they have that area partitioned off. I'm sure it does nothing. Okay, let's, let's check this out. Okay, no dark space. That was fruitless. Oh, this is a uh, this is an unforeseen issue with trying to beat the boss with Will. Usually, you actually have to search out freedom. Or the later guy that you get, in hopes that you can use them to fight the boss. We are actually trying to find Will. It's kind of funny. Not really. More like irony. More po poetic justice, since I'm being an idiot. And Trying to fight a boss with the weaker character. It's very much against my code of conduct in games. Not that I don't appreciate a, a good challenge run. Okay, I definitely know we transformed from Will to Freedom 
in this area somewhere because I come at it on the very nice. I guess I have to move this. I did comment on that very nice, um, what the hell? That very nice animation they had. And how I appreciated the fact that they actually took the time to do that. Now let me move this guy up here. We will find it. Was there a dark space in here? Was that it? I don't remember. Yes! Great! Good! Well, please. Thank you. Return to young Will, yes. Like, that's the best adjective they could come up with that for that guy, is young Will. He's young. He's Will. I mean, he does have a bit of his own personality. He's not a totally flat character. He doesn't say much, but... You know, I would have to say he's pretty friggin' courageous, <laughs> really. See, we get to see Will's animation. Do a little dance, make a little love. To the boss with our flute. Sounds like an American pie joke. <clears throat> Do you think Will went to band camp? <laughs> that's that's actually what the Tower of Babel is, guys. It's actually band camp. I didn't want to spoil it for you, but yeah. Now you know why his dad didn't come back. We better run! So we have the boss. This is very, very, um, you know, whatever. Mesopotamian. Ouch. This guy is ripping my shit off. That's okay. I can't really see those feathers very well. That's the problem. Okay, he's shooting crystals out of his mouth. Oh my. Oh, I think we are going to die. Oh, we died. How embarrassing. My, my, my. I sometimes... I am sometimes aware of having fallen on a place I know. Must have been a nightmare. Well, that was just downright embarrassing, Well, We will unequip this. I can't see his attacks. That's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, we're going to just have to be careful. And, uh, really just pick my, um, pick my attacks carefully. He's not really that hard, but I just can't see him with well. And usually, when fighting him with freedom, you know, I just kind of back off and let the Dark Friar do the talking. Okay, that's a good time to hit him. And he will not just sit idly by and let you pound him with your attacks, I see. Okay, well this is going far better. Muy bueno. See, I'm very good at Spanish. I 
fact, I should probably never speak it. Because I would horribly butcher it. Okay, doing alright. I don't know, I just couldn't see where those attacks were coming from. Kill him. He thinks he's cool. He's not cool. Coming down to the wire here. And we did it. Nice. You have defeated the huge demon. Look, a mystic statue. So yeah, I was hoping this would be a no-death run, but I did get done dead. It was a little bit tough seeing what was going on there. A strange noise fills the air around you. From out of nowhere, you hear Neil's voice. Will, you're falling to the ground! Really? You know that. How high up are they? <laughs> I've been falling for like two minutes. Grab the airplane and we'll fly out of here. Okay. Well, I, oh, I have to jump. This kid is a beast. Look at that. <laughs> That's kind of... You know. <laughs> Shoot, dropped a contact. Ah, uh, what a joke. I didn't get that when I was a kid. I thought like a contact was like something in the plane, like... I didn't know, like, you know, like, the eye contact. I don't know why I didn't make the connection. Maybe it's because it doesn't make any sense that they would have contact lenses in this world, but, you know. You what? Idiot. Will is doomed for sure now. Neil, it's still a little ways to the ground. Try again. Okay, I'll get him this time. And there we go. I love how they all ride in that plane. So that's Lance, you can see there. Young Will. Eric is holding onto the wings. And I don't know where Kara and Lily are. That was a close one. Sob, sob. Sniff, sniff. Don't cry, Will's been saved. Neil. You were great. This is this invention saved Will's life. Ha ha! Don't flatter me. We should try and locate the next ruins. I expect the shape of Cygnus is the same as the shape of Mu. Or Mu. I don't. I guess it's Mu. Anyway, to the ocean. Mu lies somewhere in this ocean. Okay, it was a little redundant, but. Of so happily flying, you can st still can't see Lily and Kara. I guess they're like in the baggage. Oh, and here we go, they're parachuting down, they got in a crash. Oh my. We got out of the airplane in the nick of time. Neil's a good inventor, but it seems there's always something missing in his inventions. <laughs> what, like not crashing? <laughs> I guess nobody's perfect, including Neil. Next thing he knew, Will was standing in a huge palace. I couldn't remember anything since my water landing. Is everyone safe? So I think this is a really cool, interesting place. What's up with that? That's odd, even if I touch it, no damage occurs. Where are you touching those skeletons, Well, I don't even want to know. But yeah, I like the effects here, with the light. A sign of light. A, uh, a sign of life from the right hand room. But we're going to go in here and save the game, because I'm sure this has been a rather long video. And we do need to stop it because I don't want to kill you guys with a two hour Illusion of Gaia video. Anyway, um, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Ugh. 
Excuse me, I'm getting my tongue tied. I appreciate you watching this. Uh, just love sharing this game with everyone. One of my favorites. So until next time, good luck, happy gaming.